Hi guys, my name is Aman and this is going to be the first video in a series on doing finance in Python. We're going to be starting with some pretty basic stuff and today's video is going to be about importing data and doing a few basic, mm, I could say process, a bit of basic processing on it. And I, we, the aim is to end with doing reinforcement learning on stock prediction. So there'll be a bunch of videos along the way, slowly getting harder. but let's start off with this one so in today's video i'm gonna like try to code like with you and show you while i'm typing it explaining each line as i go and also trying to you know if there's any errors or bugs that i come across i'm gonna tr try to troubleshoot it in real time so that you have a more realistic experience of what you would be doing if you were trying to do this by yourself and let's just get started then so I have the imports ready already. So you're gonna be importing time, date time, pandas data reader, and numpy pandas and matplotlib.pyplot, just for plotting every, all the data we have. And pandas data reader is basically what we're using to get data off the internet. Now, before we start, you wanna declare a date. Now, what you want is to get data from a certain date till today, that's what the aim that's what we're trying to do in this and we're basically just gonna define the starting date using this so you want to make it a string and then we do date time dot date time because that's how the function is dot today which gives you the date of today and then you want to subtract date time dot time delta which is how you subtract dates in Python. You can't just directly subtract a number like you would with an integer or a float because dates are their own data type. And I think we'll put days equal to 200. Should give us data which is roughly 140-ish, basically five by seven into 200 days long because you won't have data for the weekends. And this will just give you a date that's 200 days in the past. And stocks like are in, we won't have data for weekends because like stock markets are closed on Saturdays and Sundays. So you won't have any stock data from those days. And we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go outside that. And we're gonna change the format of the date because that is important for us. We're gonna put it as percent y dash percent month dash percent day. And that's how you change the format. You simple stuff. Next we have symbols. Now here we're gonna define the tickers for each of the stocks we want to follow. So we like Facebook's is FB, Apple's is A A P L. You can add anything else you want. Microsoft is M F S F T, and you can make this array as big as you want for all the tickers you want to see. And uh, for this video, we can focus on just F B because that's all we really need. But you can make it as big as you want. And then you can go to back data dot close is equal to pd dot data frame now here we're just defining empty data frames which will append data to later on but for now we're just these are just the empty ones is equal to pd dot data so you're gonna do the same thing for all the different columns of information you want. We're just gonna be taking the closing prices, the opening prices and the volume. For the algorithms we're using right now, we won't even need the opening price because you will just use the closing price of the previous day instead in most of them, but we'll just import it anyways to have another data point in here. You could also import the date. That's just the index of the data over here. 
it will be much more helpful if you're trying to do NLP or something. You would actually need to import the date. But since like at least in the this video and the next video, there's no aim of doing any kind of natural language processing. We're not going to be importing the date because that information isn't really important to us right now. Now for X in sim, which is just a for loop. Now for now, we only have one ticker in sim, so it doesn't really matter if you use the for loop or not. But if you added more, that would be important. now where this is how we're going to append the data back data close is equal to no you want to have a column over here equal to and this is going to be a format function dot format x so we're doing this like for now we only have one ticker so it doesn't matter if we'd use this or not but if you have more than that then you'll have columns that have the same title and since you don't want that we'll just call it like facebook close or apple close or microsoft close and it'll just put whatever the ticker is over here is equal to wb which is our data reader dot data reader x which is which tells it what ticker to use data source tells it which website to take it from we are going to be using yahoo finance because that seems to work the best for me and start equals date which is the date we defined up over here this is the start date we're leaving the end date as the default because the default will be the current date so that's completely fine that and from this we want the adjusted close column that's a type and we want to reset the index because when you want to concatenate the data you'll get errors if the indexes aren't reset because they might have different index indices and that is not very good for us Now saying dot equals to basically drops the index. Back data volume So again we do the same thing here So I could just copy paste the other thing and just change the things that I have to change about it so that's what I'll do for the next one. But for now, we'll just type this out. It's basically the same thing. So I'm not going to go over it again. I did not want to do that. And again, oh, you don't have to put that. Instead of adjusted close, we'd want volume here. Again, reset the index. And drop equals to true. For the last one, we just copy paste this first line. an extra space over there we change close to open change this close to open and we change adjusted close to just open and that should give us our data now we can concatenate the data into one data frame the df is pd dot concat and then you'd want to put back data close back data open and back data volume 
and you want to put axis equal to one that tells you along which axis to concatenate the data axis one is makes all of these different columns axis zero would mean they'd make one column with all of these one below the other which is not what we want here then you want to drop any missing data points because no, the, this is a question you have to ask whenever you have a lot of data like because out in the real world a lot of times like while doing data science your data will be very incomplete so you have to make a choice on how you want to deal with that over here there won't be a lot of missing data because like stock prices are fairly well documented so we can just drop the missing data points but there might be some places where you would have to actually come up with some kind of filler for missing data points or replace them with something else here we can just drop them entirely and now we're going to turn it into a numpy array which uh, isn't something you necessarily have to do depending on whether you use third party modules or not for processing this data later on because some third party modules might prefer pandas as their input and some of them don't and pandas is more powerful in the sense that it allows you to have different data types in different columns unlike a numpy array which has to have the same data type throughout but for the code that I've written for the different indicators in this video I'm going to be using numpy arrays because it makes it simpler to understand the code that you've written so that's what I'm going to be using so I'm going to turn it into a numpy array right now but you don't necessarily have to do this and that should be that let's run this see what we get and then we can just print df and look at our data if collab allows us to okay i don't see why they're putting 200 as 2.07 in face to the power 2 but it's an interesting decision it's an interesting decision not gonna lie so this data looks kind of annoying as it stands right now doesn't really tell us much so maybe we want to plot it instead so we can plot plt dot plot uh, df and you want all the rows and this is how you do all the rows and you want the zeroth column which would be our closing prices so let's do that and this looks much better so this just tells you the stock price per day and you can see it's kind of steadily rising from here to here there's spikes obviously and then there's some noise as well all of which we will learn to model later on in the series at least in some way but yeah this is what we have right here and for a little bit of basic processing for this video what we'll do is I'll just define a function so we'll define percent change which pandas has a module for by the way so if you're using pandas directly you wouldn't need to worry about defining this because you could just use whatever you're using like if you're using pandas you could just have a data frame and define your column and just use the dot pct change i think that's how it is but here we're going to define our own function and it's a very simple function you're gonna create an empty array y mm. you're gonna create a for loop for i in range length of x minus one because we're gonna be doing <coughs> and then because there'll be an extra index because we're gonna be using x of i plus one or whatever just wanna up y dot append which appends this value to y 
x of i plus 1 minus x of i mm, you want to divide the whole thing by x of i because that's your percentage change you could multiply this by 100 if you wanted but it's not really this is a scaling factor so it doesn't matter and then we just return the y mm. so that's going to be a function we can run it on this and try to plot that so plt dot plot percent oh yeah in case like you don't know this x is what we'll be passing in so that'll be like a list you want to pass in a list x and for that list it'll just give you the percentage change for each element that's what this function is made to do so we'll do a percentage change again of the closing values so that'll be the same thing as above and we close this off and there we go and this gives you a plot of the percentage change as you can see the percentage change over here it's between minus 0 0.75 to 0 0.075 if you multiplied it by 100 of course i think that's between 7.5 percent up and down and you can see this is basically looks like white noise this is very random which is fine because the stock market is fundamentally quite unpredictable and this models it really well and we will be going to a model later on using the monte carlo simulations in which you would be basically trying to create white noise and using that to predict stock markets it's pretty interesting so stick around for that and i think that's it for this video In the next video we're going to define some indicators and move along from there thank you